Hi, I'm going to be reading Chapter 2 of The Cricket in Times Square. Chapter 2, Mario. Mario heard the sound too. He stood up and listened intently. The noise of the shuttle rattled off into silence. From the streets above came the quiet murmur of the light traffic. There was a noise of rustling nothingness in the station. Still Mario listened, straining to catch the mysterious sound. And there it came again. It was like a quick stroke across the strings of a violin, or like a harp that had been plucked suddenly. If a leaf in a green forest far from New York had fallen at midnight through the darkness in a thicket, it might have sounded like that. Mario thought he knew what it was. The summer before, he had gone to visit a friend who lived on Long Island. One afternoon, as the low sun reached long yellow fingers through all the tall grasses, he had stopped beside a meadow to listen to just uh, such a noise. But there had been many of them then, a chorus. Now there was only one. Finally, it came again through the subway station. Mario slipped out into the newsstand and stood waiting. The next time he heard the sound, he went toward it. It seemed to come from one corner next to the stairs that led up to 42nd Street. Softly, Mario went toward the spot. For several minutes, there was only the whispering silence. Whatever it was that was making the sound had heard him coming and was quiet. Silently, Mario waited. Then he heard it again, rising from the pile of waste papers and suit that had blown against the concrete wall. He went down and very gently began to lift off the papers. One by one, he inspected them and laid them to one side. Down near the bottom, the papers became dirtier and dirtier. Mario reached the floor. He began to feel with his hands through the dust and the soot. And wedged in a crack under all the refuse, he found what he'd been looking for. It was a little insect about an inch long and covered with dirt. It had six legs, two antenna on its head, and what seemed to be a pair of wings folded on its back. Holding his discovery as carefully as his fingers could, Mario lifted the insect up and rested him in the palm of his hand. A cricket, he exclaimed. Keeping his cupped hand very steadily, Mario walked back to the newsstand. The cricket didn't move, and he didn't make that little musical noise anymore. He just lay perfectly still, as if he were sleeping or frightened to death. Mario pulled out a Kleenex and laid the cricket on it. And then he took another and started to dust him off. Ever so softly, he tapped the hard black shell and the antenna and the ling legs and the wings. Gradually, the dirt that had collected on the insect fell away. His true collar was still back, black, but now it had a bright, glossy sheen. When Mario had cleaned off the cricket as much as he could, he hung it around the floor of the station for a matchbox. In a minute, he found one and knocked out one end. Then he folded a sheet of Kleenex, tucked it into the box, and put the cricket in. He made a perfect bed. The cricket seemed to like his new home. He moved around a few times and settled himself comfortably. Mario sat for a long time, just looking. He was so happy and excited that when anyone walked through the news station, he forgot to shout, Newspapers! And magazines! And then a thought occurred to him. Perhaps the cricket was hungry. He rummaged through his jacket pocket and found a piece of chocolate bar that had been left over from supper. Mario broke off one corner and held it out to the cricket on the end of his finger. Cautiously, the insect lifted his head to the chocolate. He seemed to smell it a moment and then took a bite. A shiver of pleasure went over Mario as the cricket ate from his hand. Mama and Papa Bellini came up from the stairs from the low, lower level of the station. Mama was a short woman, a little stouter than she liked to admit, who wheezed and got a red face when she had to climb steps. Papa was tall and somewhat bent over, but he had kindness that shone about him. There seemed always to be something smiling inside Papa. Mario was so busy feeding his cricket that he didn't see them when they came up to the newsstand. So, said Mama, craning over the counter, what now? I found a cricket, Mario exclaimed. He picked up the insect very gently between his thumb and his forefinger and held it out for his parents to see. Mama studied the little black creature carefully. It's a bug. She pronounced finally, throw it away. Mario's happiness fell in ruins. No, Mama, he said anxiously. It's a special kind of bug. Crickets are a good luck. Good luck, eh? Mama's voice had a way of sounding very dry when she didn't believe something. Cricketers are good luck, so I suppose ants are better luck. And cockroaches are the best luck of all. Throw it away. Please, Mama, I want to keep him for a pet. No bugs are coming into my house, said Mama. We've got enough already with the screens full of holes. He'll whistle to his friends. They'll come from all over and we'll have a house full of cricketeers. No, he won't, said Mario in a low voice. I'll fix the screens. 
But he knew there was no arguing with Mama. When she made up her mind, he might as well try to reason with the 8th Avenue subway. How was selling tonight? asked Papa. He was a peaceful man and always tried to heat off arguments. Changing the subject was something he did very well. Fifteen papers and four magazines, said Mario, and Paul just brought a Sunday Times. No one took a musical America or anything else nice. Papa was very proud of his newsstand, and it carried all of what he called the quality magazines. No, answered Mario. So you spend less time playing with your tears. You sell more in papers, said Mama. Oh, now, now, Papa said, as he soothed her. Mario can't help if nobody buys. You can tell the temperature with crickets, too, said Mario. You count the number of chirps in a minute, divide by four, and add 40. They're very intelligent. Who needs a cricketeer thermometer, said Mama. It's coming on summer. It's New York. It's hot. And how do you know so much about cricketeers? Are you one? Jimmy Lebowski told me last summer, said Mario. They give it to the expert, Jimmy Lebowski, said Mama. Bugs carry germs. He doesn't come in the house. Mario looked down at his new friend in the palm of his hand. Just for once, he had been really happy. The cricket seemed to know something that was wrong. He jumped into the shelf and crept into the matchbox. He kept it here in the newsstand, suggested Papa. Mario jumped at the idea, yes, and then he wouldn't have to come home. I could feed him here and leave him here, and you'll never have to see him, he said to Mama. And when you took the stand, I'll bring him with me. Mama paused. Cricketeer, she said scornfully. What do we do, and what do we want with the cricketeer? What do we want with the newsstand, said Papa? We got it. Let's keep it. There was something resigned, but nice about Papa. You said I could have a dog, said Mario, but I never got him, and I never got a cat or a bird or anything. I wanted this cricket for my pet. He's yours then, said Papa, and when Papa spoke in a certain quiet tone, there was that was all there was to, to it. Even Mama didn't dare disagree. She took a deep breath. Oh, well, she said. And Mario knew it would be all right. Mama saying, oh, well, was her way of giving in. But only on trial, he says, and at the first sign of a crick to your friends, or we come down with peculiar diseases, out he goes. Yes, Mama, anything you say, said Mario. Come on, Mario, Papa said. Help me close up. Mario held the matchbox up to his eye. He was sure the cricket looked much happier now that he could say, he could say, good night, he said. I'll be back in the morning. Talking to it yet, said Mama. I've got a cricket here for a son. Papa took one side of the cover to the newsstand, Mara to the other, and together they fitted it on. Papa locked it. As they were going downstairs to the trains, Mario looked back over his shoulder. He could almost feel the cricket snugged away in his matchbox bed in the darkness.